By the end of this video, you'll be a Quaternion expert in Unity, no math required. If you're a game developer, then you'll probably like my free asset packs. You can grab them in the description below for free. First, you need to understand the difference between an orientation and a rotation. Orientation is the direction the object is facing. It's where its local forward axis is looking at. Rotation is the act of changing the object's orientation. Now that we've got that out of the way, in Unity there are two ways to represent orientation in 3D space. Euler angles and quaternions. Euler angles are pretty easy to grasp and you're probably already familiar with them. The idea behind Euler angles is to break down the orientation of our object into three axes, x, y, and z. By combining these individual rotations, we can obtain every orientation we could ever desire. But there are two main issues with this approach. The first issue arises in the order that we apply the rotations. Here I have two cameras. The left camera uses XYZ order, the right camera uses ZYX order. I'm going to apply a 90, 45, 30 degree rotation to both of them and you can see that we get two different orientations. So order matters. The second issue is called gimbal lock best illustrated with an example. As you can see here, each one of the axes is represented with a disc, blue, red, and gray. The blue disc rotates around this axis, the red disc rotates around this axis, and the green one around this axis. The issue occurs when we take the red axis and we rotate it 90 degrees in this way, and as you can see, the blue disc and the green disc are now on the same plane, which means we just lost one degree of rotation. This is where quaternions come into play. They solve all of these issues. Quaternions are represented by four values, usually labeled as x, y, z, and w. Note that x, y, z do not represent the axes. You can think of each letter as representing an orientation. In this example, you can visualize each of the orientations. By changing the value of one of these, you are essentially changing the weight of that orientation, or its percentage of influence. So what we're essentially doing is we're combining these four orientations to get all of the other possible combinations. As you can see in this example, I'm combining the first two orientations to get this new rotation which is exactly in the middle because I'm using 50% of the first and 50% of the second. That's enough theory, let's move on to practical examples. There are a few functions that you will use 99% of time while working with quaternions. So let's cover them one by one. Quaternion.lookRotation is used to make an object look at something while maintaining its orientation. In this example, the yellow arrow is looking in the direction of the purple arrow, but it's maintaining its own orientation based on the global upwards direction. So if you take a look at the rods, you will notice that they are not synchronized, but they are looking in the same direction because the yellow arrow's green arrow is always pointing upwards. Think how your head is always oriented upright while watching TV. It doesn't just flip upside down to look at a TV. This can be used for cameras following objects, like in this example, where I'm just calculating the vector from the camera towards the car with regards to the global up direction and then orienting the camera in that direction. It's also commonly used to make the head of a character track the player during a dialogue, for example. Drum to rotation is similar to look rotation, but it only specifies the direction that the object is pointing. Think of it as being asked to point a laser in some direction. You will do so without really thinking about the way your wrist is rotated. You will simply do it as is most convenient for you. In this example, I'm using from to rotation to orient the markers up direction from the world up direction to the surface normal. Angle axis is probably the easiest one to grasp. It takes two parameters, angle and axis. To visualize the axis, just imagine stabbing your object with a knife. This will give you the axis of rotation. The angle is just the amount of rotation that you want to occur on that axis. That's it. We use rotate towards when we want to smoothly rotate from one orientation to another. You supply it with the original rotation, the target rotation, and the step, which is essentially the maximum amount I can move this frame. In this example, I'm just applying it to the arrows and then I'm also using it for the camera tracking. So I'm just storing the target orientation and then I'm rotating towards that orientation from my current orientation at the given speed. Whenever you have two orientations and you want to create a new orientation that is a percentage of the two, 
you would use quaternion.slurp. In this simple example, I have a reference to the two arrows. I've exposed the interpolation variable and clamped it between 0 and 1, and then I simply interpolate between the two orientations and update. You can use quaternion.inverse to get the inverse orientation. As you can see in this example, I'm just getting the inverse orientation of this arrow. Another useful method is quaternion.euler. You can use it to convert Euler angles into quaternions. You just supply it with a normal Euler and it will spit out a corresponding quaternion. I will use this a lot in the following example. When you multiply two quaternions together, you are visually adding the two orientations. As you can see here, I'm taking the orientation of the arrow and I'm multiplying it with the quaternion that I'm creating with quaternion.euler to make it rotate on the local y-axis by 15 degrees. You can also use a quaternion to rotate a vector by multiplying a quaternion with a vector in that order. In this simple example, I'm calculating the vector from the sun to the little blue planet and I'm rotating that vector around the y-axis by 15 degrees every time I press space. And then I set the position of the blue planet to the sun position plus that relative offset. 